All right, let's begin. Welcome everybody to our inaugural Design It Day session, our inaugural Design It Day event. My name is Wilmer Compagnoni and I lead the technical marketing team at Kemet. And with me for this session is Jonathan No, one of our field application engineers in, uh, out of, based out of Texas. And Jonathan today for this particular module of Design It Day will be covering the use of safety capacitors as well as some other benefits and the selection options that we have available. So without further ado, I'll leave it to Jonathan. And if you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A portion of the Zoom window and we'll get to it as soon as Jonathan is done. Yeah, thanks Wilmer. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining uh, today's presentation. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Jonathan No. Um, I've been a field application engineer with uh, Kemet Electronics uh, for about six years now, um, and I've covered uh, various regions across North America, um, but presently I cover South uh, United States, Mexico, and Latin America. Uh, more recently, I've acquired some account manager responsibilities uh, for one of our key customers, uh, here in Austin. Uh, and like Wilmer said, if you guys have any questions, uh, please submit it through the Q&A window. So this is the outline for today's presentation. Um, the gist of it, we're going to talk about what safety capacitors are and how we can use them to basically filter out high frequency noise. Um, I am going to be talking about uh, a few items related to classifications and qualifications, um, a few things about applications, and then finally I'll end with uh, some of our product offerings uh, within film, uh, ceramic discs, and uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors that are surface mount. So electromagnetic compliance. So uh, I first want to define uh, mains voltage and mains voltage is also known as um, utility power, uh, wall power, uh, power grid. It's basically the power that's delivered from the utility to either your home or your business. Um, it's basically the power network that consumers will use when they plug in their um, appliance. It could be a refrigerator, uh, a dryer, um, a freezer. Um, even uh, laptops, uh, tablets, cell phones, these all connect to the power network that's uh, flowing through your home or your business. And if you think about it, all of these devices are interconnected to the same power network. Uh, so when we talk about electromagnetic compliance or EMC, uh, we're talking about basically the devices working in harmony with each other. And so there has to be uh, proper isolation um, between all of these devices that share the same power network. Uh, not only that, but uh, we also have to consider protection against uh, surges, voltage surges. Now, there may be uh, lightning, for example, that disrupts the power line and induces some type of voltage transient or voltage spike. Uh, so not only do these safety capacitors have to remove the garbage that's coming into the device and coming out of the device, but these capacitors also need to be able to uh, suppress and protect against those uh, voltage transients. Uh, and one thing that I, I forgot to mention is the uh, two principal properties of an electrical power supply is going to be the voltage and the frequency. And this is really dependent where uh, you are located in the world. Um, for example, in the United States, uh, we use 120 volts at 60 hertz. Um, and that's mostly true for North America, but if you start talking about Europe, uh, then the, uh, the voltage and the frequencies are gonna be different. It could be 220 volts AC at 50 hertz or at 60 hertz. So you really have to uh, remember where your product is going to be um, sold in. So what are safety capacitors? Um, in a nutshell, it's a capacitor that's going to help 
uh, attenuate or reduce or mitigate uh, high frequency noise and allow that clean uh, AC, fundamental AC waveform that's switching at 50, uh, 60 hertz. Um, these are also uh, safety rated. So in situations where um, a failure could cause a fire or electrical shock to the user, uh, these capacitors have to be uh, very conservatively and very robustly uh, designed so that they do not fail short uh, in these uh, circuit locations. Um, and of course, they need to meet certain uh, regulatory uh, qualifications. So for example, they need to meet IEC uh, and UL standards. So how do we reduce EMI on the AC line? So before I get into uh, this very generalized circuit right here, I first want to define uh, the three technologies below. So the chokes, uh, and we can really group the X and Y capacitors together. Um, but on the choke side, uh, it's important to understand the uh, impedance characteristics for e each of these technologies. So with your magnetic choke, if you look at the impedance curve, you'll actually see that the impedance is extremely low at your fundamental frequency, which is 50 to 60 Hertz. And then as you go to higher frequencies, the impedance is going to be very high. So keep that in mind when we start looking at this, uh, at this generalized circuit. Now for your capacitors, it's kind of the opposite. If you look at the impedance curve uh, for these capacitors, the, uh, the impedance is actually very high at your fundamental frequencies. And then as you go higher in frequency, uh, the impedance is actually very small and very low. And so this is also very important when we, stop, when we start talking about this circuit here. Uh, okay, so in this example, let's say we have a drying machine, which is uh, connected to, let's say, a 240 volt AC um, outlet. Um, so if we look at the X location, now X uh, is defined as line to line or line to neutral. So we're mostly concerned about protecting against differential mode noise, right? So the uh, X capacitor and the differential mode choke work hand in hand to uh, mitigate that high frequency noise, right? So basically the X capacitor, because it has low impedance at high frequency, it's gonna pull or it's going to shunt that high frequency noise from line to neutral. Uh, and vice versa with the differential mode choke, because it has a uh, very low impedance at the fundamental frequency, it's gonna allow that AC waveform to pass very easily. Uh, now, if we move to the second stage of the EMI filter, we have the Y capacitors, right? So the Y capacitors are going to be placed uh, line to ground. And it's important to note that ground is actually the chassis or the metal enclosure for the dryer. Right, so this is very important because if this capacitor were to fail short, then if let's say your grandma or your mother touches the dryer, then they could be uh, electrocuted, which um, could potentially end in death. So we need to be very careful when we choose uh, the capacitors for the Y and X uh, locations in the circuit. So, you know, tying back to what I said earlier, X capacitors, remember, think of it as like a cross. So it's gonna be used across the line. So line to line or line to neutral applications. And it's gonna be used to protect against differential, no, uh, differential mode noise. Uh, class Y is specifically designed uh, to be used in line to ground applications. Uh, so I like to just think of the Y kind of going um, kind of pointing to ground, that's uh, one way to remember it. But basically, uh, you're protecting against that common mode noise and you're using it in conjunction with your common mode choke. Now, each uh, classification can really be broken down into uh, two subclasses, right? So when we talk about your X capacitors, the, the bottom tier is gonna be your X2. So that's gonna have an impulse rating of about two and a half kilovolts, and that changes depending on what your capacitance is. Uh, 
But you'll notice that as you go to the step above or the level above, which is X1, you'll actually notice that the impulse rating actually increases uh, pretty substantially to four kilovolts. So basically that means this type of capacitor, this safety rated capacitor at X1, is going to be able to handle higher surges and higher transients compared to your X2. And if you look at this chart here, the, the application shows that, right? So we typically see the X2 capacitors being used in household appliances or household goods, right? So your um, washing machine, your, um, your TV, your uh, uh, washer dryer, those are going to be your general purpose home appliances that are going to be using the X2 capacitors. Um, X1 uh, is more industrial. It's, it's for higher pulse applications. So you can think of um, industrial equipment, industrial computers, um, lighting ballasts that may be connected to a three-phase three power line. So X1 is generally reserved for those more industrial applications. Uh, now, when we look at the uh, Y subclasses, Y1 and Y2, similar idea, right? So Y2 is the uh, basically the baseline or, or the lowest tier um, within the Y class and it has an impulse rating of five kilovolts but you'll notice if you go to one step higher which is uh, Y1 the impulse rating jumps substantially to eight kilovolts and the same idea applies here that we just talked about for the X class in that the Y2s are generally reserved for these home appliances, anything that you're going to be connecting to the AC outlet um, in your home or business. Now, Y1s are going to be uh, much more reinforced. It's going to be using a much more conservative design. Uh, and therefore, those are generally uh, used in those industrial type applications that I mentioned before, like lighting and um, outdoor hardware and things like that. One example uh, that I want to point out, you'll sometimes see in our data sheets that um, uh, one product might have uh, both an X and Y uh, safety rating. Um, and it, it, it might be confusing for some people, but you just have to understand uh, if you were to use that capacitor uh, in a certain location, basically the voltage uh, rating that you must uh, meet uh, changes, right? So if you were to use this X1, Y2 capacitor in a line to line or line to neutral application, uh, then the most voltage that you should apply to that part is 400 volts AC and vice versa with, uh, if you were to use that same capacitor in a line to ground application, um, the most that you should apply to that capacitor is 250 volts AC. Now, this is all per IEC 6034-14. So, don't take my word for it. You can go to uh, Google and type in this document and look at it yourself and you'll see the same, uh, the same chart in there. So substitution, we, we get this question quite a bit actually. And uh, you know, the question is always, hey, can I use this Y capacitor in a line to line or line to neutral application? And the answer is yes, right? Um, you know, if you saw the chart before, uh, the Y capacitors have extremely high uh, impulse ratings, um, and therefore you could potentially use them in substitution for an X1 or an X2. So for example, if we're looking at a line-to-line -line or line-to-neutral application, which is typically a, an X application, you could use a Y1 or Y2. I would say it's not as efficient because the, uh, the Y capacitors, again, they have to be conservatively designed, and they're generally larger because of that. Um, so if, uh, if you're concerned about not over-specking the part for this um, X capacitor location, then uh, I would definitely recommend uh, using the, the correct uh, safety rating for that location. So let's talk about some, some applications, right? So automotive, uh, is a huge industry focus uh, at Kemet. And we focused a lot of our R&D resources to this, right? So a lot of the tension has been to making uh, these safety capacitors, um, not only automotive grade, which is um, qualified to AECQ200 standards, uh, 
but making sure that they're able to pass uh, IEC uh, standards for um, high humidity and high temperature applications. So uh, we'll touch on this in the later uh, presentation, but you'll see that we have film technology that can handle very high humidity at high temperatures. So we're talking about 85 uh, degrees Celsius at 85% relative humidity. Um, but specifically, we need to be very careful when we're selecting the X and Y safety capacitors for any of these applications. For example, uh, for the onboard charger, which directly connects to, uh, to your utility or your AC power uh, or your, um, your mains voltage, um, you need to be aware that uh, these capacitors may be subject to those harsh environmental conditions. Um, in many cases, safety agency certifications are required. Um, and when we talk about motor inverters, right, electric shock and electric hazard, this ties back to my comment earlier to if, uh, if specifically if the Y capacitor were to short, um, then there's risk to the user for electric shock. Uh, and it's a, a potentially a huge hazard to any users that interact with that uh, vehicle. Um, and there's also another application uh, similar to the uh, lightning strike. If there's somehow a, a, a fast disconnect of the battery, that could cause a huge impulse voltage and a huge voltage spike um, for the device. And the correct safety capacitor needs to be in place uh, to protect all of the other components uh, on the board. So safety capacitor types. So um, we have three different uh, technologies here at Kemet and uh, the technology uh, really depends on your application and what you really need in terms of uh, parametric requirements. Each one has their own advantages. Uh, one is not necessarily better than the other. It just depends on what your application needs. Um, so uh, when we talk about film capacitors, you'll see that uh, the film capacitors have a very high um, AC voltage potential. So we're talking about 760 volts AC. And one thing to point out compared to the other two technologies that you see here is the capacitance range. So um, compared to the other two technologies, film has, has a very high capability in terms of uh, capacitance. So we're talking about up to 10 microfarads of capacitance for these uh, EMI filter caps. Um, so some of the advantages, again, include uh, the high reliability options that we have for this technology. So automotive grade and also per IEC standards, very high humidity, high temperature capability, 85, 85, uh, 4,000 hours or 500 hours. One other key characteristic that has to be considered is the self-healing characteristic, right? So all, most film capacitors have uh, a self-healing characteristic. Different uh, dielectric materials may have better self-healing characteristics than other. For, for example, polypropylene um, has a much better self-healing characteristic than paper. Um, but basically what the self-healing characteristic does is it basically allows for the capacitor to recover um, basically its insulation resistance if it were to drop uh, momentarily. So basically if there's uh, a crack or a leakage site on the dielectric, um, if enough localized heating occurs at the electrode metallization, that could cause basically the, the dielectric to vaporize and congeal and um, basically plug up that hole. So you may get uh, a, a tiny drop in capacitance, a tiny drop due to uh, the dielectric clearing, but you uh, basically recover uh, almost back to your normal level of insulation resistance. So that's one key characteristic uh, that film capacitors have. Now moving on to multi-layer ceramic capacitors, which are surface mount, um, the, you'll notice that the voltage capability is, is much more restrictive compared to film, right? So we have voltage ratings up to 250 volts AC. Um, and you'll notice that there's two different dielectrics that we offer. We offer the class one dielectric, which is a C0G, so ultra stable um, with respect to voltage and temperature. And we also have a class two variant, um, which is um, 
little less stable. It does have some DC bias effects and it does have uh, uh, some uh, TCC. So X XMRs, for example, has plus or minus 15%. So those are some things that you absolutely need to consider. Um, but the true and key advantage of using an MLCC that is surface mountable is basically the size reduction and the ability uh, to use these uh, in a high density uh, board space, basically. So uh, we've got uh, footprints that are between 1808 and 2205. So uh, in terms of size, it's gonna be uh, a much smaller than what you would find in a film capacitor. Now, moving on to uh, the ceramic disc, um, we have a lot of different options, right? So voltages all the way up to 760 volts AC. Um, and I would say uh, one of the key advantages uh, of this disk technology, uh, to be honest, it's gonna be a very economical compared to your other solutions or your other technologies. I would say one thing to really pay attention to is the dielectric that's used, right? So for these ceramic disks, they're typically either class two or class three dielectrics, right? So we're talking about X7R, uh, Y5R, Z5U, uh, and so on and so forth. You have to be careful when you uh, select the safety capacitor using these dielectrics, because if you get variation in capacitance uh, over temperature and variation in capacitance over voltage, that's going to affect your filtering performance, right? That's going to affect your impedance curve and therefore that's going to impact whether or not your, uh, your device um, passes your EMC uh, emissions testing regulations. So just a few product highlights within our safety film portfolio. So you can see that we have a whole range of uh, safety capacitors, um, both X and Y, different temperature ranges, um, different materials as well. But I want to highlight two, uh, or I should say three key series here. So the first one is the R41-T series. Um, and this is AECQ200. It is 125 C rated. But the most important thing that I want to point out, it is THB grade three B per IEC, right? So what does that mean? It means this part is able to sustain and withstand 85 degrees Celsius at 85% relative humidity, 4,000 hours at 300 volts AC and 1,500 volts DC. So this is truly important um, for applications that are outdoors, such as solar inverters that um, have to be able to withstand high temperatures and high humidities, and even automotive applications where um, humidity and temperature is a, is a real problem. So um, this is an X, uh, X1, Y2 solution. Um, and it does have UL, ENEC, and CUQ QC standards. The other two series that I want to point out is the FA63 and the FA62. Um, so these are X2 capacitors. Um, they're designed for automotive as well and for harsh environment applications. The FA62, like the R41T, is THB grade 2B. So not 3B, but 2B. So what does that mean? It means it's 85, 85, but only 500 hours compared to what we saw with the R41, um, which is 1,000 hours. And then we also have the FA63, which is 85, 85 as well, 500 hours, but at a lower voltage, uh, 240 volts um, AC. Now, again, similar with the film, the ceramic discs are, um, we have extremely large portfolio with different dielectrics. Um, so 250 volts AC all the way up to 760 volts AC. Again, the advantages here, um, they're, they're economical, they're um, low profile, and there's a lot of options available in terms of capacitance. Um, a more recent release for us is the CAS safety surface mount MLCC. Um, so we have, uh, we have one type, which is X1 and Y2, so up to 250 volts AC. And we have uh, the X2 variant as well, which is up to 250 volts AC. So this is uh, one differentiating factor uh, for this type of capacitor compared to the disc and the films, right? The, the voltage capability is gonna be 
uh, lower compared to your other two technologies. So that's something that you have to consider. But the, the key advantage here is for any products that are constrained in terms of space, board space, and even device space, uh, these MLCCs are smaller and they're surface mountable, which allows for higher uh, density, basically. So we have case sizes from 1808 um, all the way to uh, 2225. So key takeaways, uh, again, with the film capacitors, we have uh, several solutions that are automotive grade and they're IEC rated for THB, either grade two or grade three. So these components are critical. Again, these are critical for harsh environmental conditions. So any application that you might have that are outdoors or in uh, very uh, harsh conditions, this is um, the technology that you should look at first. Um, again, one of the key characteristics of film technology is self-healing, right? Self-healing is, is a very important characteristic to consider. It could save uh, the capacitor being used in X or Y if there is a voltage strike and uh, the dielectric becomes damaged somehow. Um, uh, with the MLCC, again, the key takeaway here is miniaturization, right? So in, device, in devices that uh, are really constrained in space, so for example, think about your, um, your cell phone charger uh, wall plug, right? So that might um, be using, might have a need for uh, an ultra small uh, a safety capacitor X or Y. And then uh, with your ceramic disc, again, the main takeaway is basically very high voltages, a huge range of uh, capacitive values and dielectrics to choose from. Um, and it is uh, a slim form factor, at least compared to the film technologies. So uh, thanks for uh, uh, joining this presentation on safety capacitors. Um, if anyone has a questions, um, let's, let's get to it. Well, yeah, Jonathan, we do have a few questions. Um, we'll get through two, I think, that you can handle relatively quickly, and then one here that's kind of application-driven that might need some more explanation. So first off, um, the question is about healthcare equipment. Do they uh, require X1, Y1, or X2, Y2, or, or some type of combination of both? Yeah, w was it healthcare? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically anything that is plugging into your mains voltage or your uh, wall power, um, due to regulatory requirements, um, mo ma most of these devices do require some form of an X or Y safety capacitor. So um, to answer the question, yes, uh, even health devices require um, uh, these devices, especially for isolation as well. Well, specifically though, one or two? Oh, um, I would say, uh, depending on the voltage, uh, some healthcare equipment uh, operate at very high voltages. So um, it would probably be X1 or Y2. Okay. And um, is there any difference between X and Y as far as the most likely failure mode to occur, short or open? It's not defined in the standard, but um, specifically for Y capacitors, we, we don't want them to fail short, right? So that's why when you look at the IEC chart for, um, for Y capacitors, the impulse test voltage is so high, right? We're talking about five kilovolt or eight kilovolt. And just because of that, uh, we're trying to prevent those capacitors to fail short uh, because like I said before, if they do fail short, that could cause electrocution or electric shock to the user. Okay. So, yeah. And Jonathan, does the non-isolated boost stage coming off the mains in something like a 400 volt PFC circuit, would that require safety caps? I'm sorry, say it again? So in the non-isolated boost stage coming off the mains, uh, would that require a safety cap? Um, Generally, for any application that's connected to your mains, uh, mains voltage, it would require a safety capacitor, but uh, I'd be happy to talk through more of the application offline. Yep. And then obviously your, your email's on there so people can reach you directly. Yep. And then this one is another, we've only got a minute left, but I think we can try to get into it a bit. Um, why are there no capacitors required for um, 
in in a, in a PFC area, that's still kind of a dangerous voltage. Um, is I guess the question continues: Is there a difference um, whether it's a bridge record rectifier or totem pole type topology? So let's be clear: the uh, the safety capacitors, uh, the, really the primary function is to filter out high frequency noise. Right. So when you start talking about other circuit locations that may see, um, you know, perhaps higher ripple current or something like that, the construction and the materials used, uh, specifically the electrode metallization, uh, begin to change. Right. Because these these safety capacitors, they're not they're, they're not filtering out high high currents. Right. They're just filtering out high frequency noise. So. When you start talking about locations like PFC capacitor or your AC capacitor or your um, any other capacitor located further down the uh, converter stage, you're going to have to start using uh, different capacitors more suited um, based on the construction and the materials used uh, for that specific application. I, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Jonathan, I actually have a question for myself. Um, so if you're not um, if you're not in a condition that is posing a possible risk of electric shock, um, but you still obviously need to filter, filter some noise, do those X and Y capacitors have to be safety rated or can you just use quote conventional capacitors there? That, that's a great question. So I'll give one example, um, aerospace, right? Airplanes. We, we get this question quite a bit from um, our aerospace customers. So if you're talking about a power supply that's going into an airplane, which is switching at 400, 400 hertz, the question is, do I have to use a safety capacitor? And, and the answer is, is no, you don't have to use a, a safety capacitor in that location, right? Um, it's all really defined by your regulatory body, um, whether or not you need the safety capacitor. But in the case of an airplane, there's really no risk um, uh, for electric shock to the user ground is the chassis of the plane, correct? Okay, so it, it's only when you're, yeah, so it's only when people are coming into contact with, or possibly coming into contact with these high voltages. That's right. All right. Um, we're a couple of minutes over, but I think we're, we're, we're good with this. If you have any additional questions, you can, you can use the contact us form there on the slide or reach out to Jonathan directly. And uh, thank you everybody for joining this session of Design It Day. We have another uh, module scheduled here in, in a little bit. And uh, thank you for joining. And you will be receiving an email with a, a, a instructions as to how to download these presentations. Thank you everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Wilmer. All right, thanks, John.